are live. Welcome everyone to the multi-million dollar agent show. I'm your host, Rob Jacoman, and I'm joined by my co-host, Violet Rainwater. Hey, Violet, how are you doing today? I'm doing so good. So good to be here, Rob. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, it is so, so exciting. We have something really special uh, it's in store for everybody today. And obviously, the reason why we started and launched this show is because we want to create enormous value for this industry. Uh, we want to help agents produce multi-million dollar books of business and build that agency of your dreams. And this is really going to be our launching pad to, to help you add that value to your life and to your business and take your agency to a whole new level. So we are extremely blessed and excited to have our very first special guest. We have Phil Fox. Hey, Phil. Is, hey, Phil. Phil is the president of ICA and uh, just, uh, and I can say personally, just an amazing human being. Um, he's been in this business a long time. He has such an amazing experience and a journey that we all want to, we, we want to learn from Phil. We actually want to pick his brain. And uh, if anyone is here uh, and, and wants to get filled with knowledge, experience, and someone who's truly a, a, has a success story to tell, it is Phil. So Phil, welcome to our show. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I greatly appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. So actually, we're, we're excited. Uh, so, Violet, we have uh, our first question. I'm going to have yeah. you ask Phil, and it's like, this is probably an unusual question, but I love this one so much. So, so Violet, take it away. Yeah, you, you know, Robin, I just wanted to add on as we're sitting here, and we're so excited to have Phil on. Phil really had me at hello. I mean, first of all, you can tell just by looking at him, he's got that old Hollywood handsome style going on, you know, and but just having the story that he has, I'm so excited to share his story because right when I heard it, I knew I wanted to be a part of the ICA family. And so, Phil, we want to start off with tell us one thing about yourself that doesn't show up in your bio or maybe people don't know about. Well, um, I don't know if they don't know about it or not, but I guess something that might be kind of at least unique to somebody my age anyway is that when I was quite a bit younger, like uh, about a third of your age, uh, I was a very much of a risk taker, but it was more of an advent adventure risk taker. I used to uh, enjoy climbing uh, rock faces on mountains uh, without ropes or safety equipment just for fun. Got into trouble a few times on that. I uh, used to do uh, a little bit of caving, walking in caves that have multiple channels and tunnels and stuff like that, and getting in there and deciding it's time to go and realize I don't have an exit plan. Um, <laughs> I have definitely taken a lot of risks. I uh, probably had more fun putting together motorbikes when I was a kid, and this goes back to the 1960s wow. and even before, where I would take an old bicycle and uh, put a four or five horsepower motor on it and uh, connect it to the front wheel and then get start driving around at 40, 50, 60 miles an hour on that thing and then trying to get somebody else to buy it from me. So, yeah, I, I'm a risk taker, but uh, not 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 to the point where I didn't make it this far in life. That's for sure. It's well, I, I know you're a risk taker. I mean, you being in the insurance industry, a, a lot of companies in this space are quite behind especially with technology, those kind of advancements. And you just taking a risk on Rob and I, we came with all these you know, crazy ideas that nobody's doing in this space. And you are a visionary and you took a risk on us. So I know that you are a risk taker, but that's what got you to this point where you are today. You have to take risk in order to grow a business. So I love that. Well, yeah, well, yeah. taking risks is, uh, they've changed over the years. I, I don't jump on fast vehicles or, or um, uh, take uh, adventure trips as much as I used to. But every day that I'm working with uh, our, our company here and with, with our member agents and, and uh, other things, I am not only taking a risk for myself, I am also taking on a little bit of the responsibility for the risk of others. And with that, I just want to make sure that uh, when we do take on that risk, that it is in the best interest of all parties. So uh, risk taking is fun to do. But there are some consequences if you don't do it right. That's true. That's true. Absolutely. Well, that's a that's actually a great transition, Phil, because one of the questions that I had on my mind, and 
you know, this is something that um, is so near and dear to my heart. I love stories. I love stories of success. I love to hear how someone started from nothing and, and you know, built an amazing company, an amazing business based on a vision. And you certainly, uh, you certainly have done that in your life and in your career. So with that being said, I think it'd be great for people to hear, like, Phil, how did you start off? And like, like, tell us a little bit about your journey and where you started from and, and how you got to where you are today. You know, and I have a lot of history. This could take a while. <laughs> uh, um, well, you give I, us the bridge version if you want. <laughs> okay. I started uh, working in my, my professional careers back in 1970 as a uh, manager for J.C. JCPenney. Uh, in the stores and stuff like that. And it took me about seven years to realize that the corporate life is not for somebody that doesn't want to listen to other people and be able to be <laughs> successful. And even, even yeah. though I was very successful in that career, I, I did make some, some um, uh, not enemies, but at least people that didn't really appreciate the things that I was trying to do. So I decided to go off on my own. I was living in Duluth, Minnesota at the time, and it was about 25 degrees below zero. And we moved to uh, Colorado, where the temperature at the time, this is in January, was about 65 degrees. So we uh, just in that, just that alone was a successful move. <laughs> but the only job I could find out here was to be a commercial insurance agent for a local independent agency. And with no experience whatsoever, I was able to uh, muster my way through the, the insurance exam uh, successfully, but I did study very hard for it. Had not a clue as to what that all stuff meant, but did associate with this other agency. They gave me an opportunity to, to uh, be able to make as much money as I want. They knew I was fresh into the business. And so what they did is they offered me a position, commercial lines insurance agent for a year. And they were going to give me 100% of the commission to see how well I would do. I said, great, I will do that. So we started off and uh, I, I didn't know anything about the business. So I, they had these, these giant uh, books, these commercial lines books that were about a thousand pages or 1500 pages long, two of them. And I read through those books to learn about commercial insurance. I also went through those books to learn how to write insurance policies because at that time, all computations were, were uh, manual and, and the underwriters are the ones that had to calculate those things. So I taught myself how to rate policies. Wow. And it took me a while to get through those books and understand what was going on, but I did. And it took me well, probably about three months to do that. Then I went out and I started trying to sell. Um, and I think the good news was that I was able to go out and meet people just by walking in their doors and they would ask me to quote a policy, but it was never next month. It was never three weeks from now. It was usually, can you do it by the next day? <laughs> and so fortunately I had done all of this, this training on how to rate policies. So I actually was and at the time being able to rate wow. policies, apply credits and talk to underwriters and get approvals without having to use the mail, which took at that point in time, a, a very lengthy period of, of uh, time to, uh, to get those quotes back. So I was able to sell a few policies in the very beginning. And I think I got my first commission check. I started uh, actually at the end of December of 1978 and it was May 24th when I got my first check for about $524. Wow. I had left a, a very lucrative career with JCPenney. And so that was a far cry from what I needed. <laughs> By the end of the year, I had uh, made almost twice as much money, maybe four times as much money uh, than I did at JCPenney. The insurance company that I worked for was not real happy about having to pay me 100% of all of the commissions that I had earned. And uh, so we, we had, a pretty, had a pretty good successful year. I was able to sell one account, uh, a very large account, actually in Minnesota. It was a, it was a manufacturing company there that... Uh, uh, we were, I was able to convince them that, that I knew what they were doing for business and, and, um, that my, my participation would help them to save some money. And, and we did, and that's how I got started it's from amazing. there. We, we've had an independent agent. We, we had goals and things like that, but in uh, 2004, we affiliated with an organization called SIAA and uh, we're a master agency for them. We have a national alliance with them. We, uh, took their program on and we started recruiting agents locally to, to join our network and, and uh, enjoy the benefits of being part of a large group. And that has really allowed us to make tremendous gains. And right now 
we are one of the larger master agencies in the SIA complex, <laughs> yay, and uh, we are doing very, very well. We have been able to put together some fantastic programs to help our agents to to achieve the uh, success they need, and so we're we're looking forward to continued growth throughout the years. That's awesome. That is like that, that, that's like a dream come true for. I mean, I think for a lot of people that get in this industry, um, Phil, you were able to pretty much double or quadruple your income that you used to make in a very short period of time. Yeah. And you know what? It's like everyone might think be thinking right now that like that's old school way of selling, but that's not really true. That's what I, what I know about you is it's all about relationships and nurturing those relationships and and just being able to 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 be honest and ethical and just tell a story and and like just really work hard for for people. Right. And would you say that that's probably like the most simple way to look at the formula for success. And I know that's been for myself and Violet. I know you're like that. Really, it's, 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 isn't this industry about building relationships and nurturing those relationships? It is. Um, success is infectious. Um, but the, the thing is, is that an individual can't be successful without the participation of other people in that. And so what you need to do is you, you, you don't work for your success in the business. You don't work for your achievements. You work for other people's achievements. You make them successful. You make you allow them to to benefit from your from their association with you. Other people's successes create my success. And that's the mm -hmm. only way that that you're able to move forward and, and uh, uh, get ahead in the world is, is that, you know, the other other people have to help you get there and you have to help them to allow them to get there. That's I awesome. believe that uh, Dr. Abraham Maslow called that transcendence. It was at the top of the pyramid after self-actualization. Transcendence is getting other people uh, to their success. Was you know right. really the peak of the triangle. That's that's I, that's a beautiful story. Thank you. That actually brings me to my next question, Phil. If you could share one thing that really shaped your philosophy about business, life, and success, what would it be? Um, there are a lot of things that have shaped me, most of them positive. Um, but uh, probably the most significant thing was, I guess, part of my heritage. Um, my father uh, was when he was uh, when he, when he was uh, a young boy. Um, he lived uh, he lived a relatively modest life. In fact, um, this goes back to the turn of the century, the last century. Um, he was really living a pioneer life very modest life uh, his father was a was a guy that delivered coal by horse and, and carriage to uh, various households so that during the winter time in northern minnesota people could keep their homes warm but uh he, he was telling me that that you know he he, he lived in an area a time when when things were modest they hunted for their own food my dad um, spent all summer long cutting firewood for the winter and he spent all winter cutting ice for the summer for the for the ice box. He wore blue jean coveralls every day, six days a week, all through his entire growing up years, all the way through high school. Um, and that was the only clothes that he had on. He had a Sunday Sunday clothes, but uh, it was a coverall blue jeans. When he grew, when he when he left home, he made the conscious decision that he would never own another pair of blue jeans again, because that to him was a was an equation equate, equated to his his modest beginning in life, his very humble beginning in life. So he never put on another pair of blue jeans. Wow. But yet that individual went on from there. He went to um, college, not because uh, he wanted to. He wanted to go to trade school. But at that particular point in time, colleges were about a third the cost of trade schools. And he was able to get through that. And so he, took, he went to college for two years in, in Virginia, Minnesota, which is very far north. And then he went down to the University of Minnesota for the next two years, started working for the manufacturing company. And by the time his career ended, he was the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Oh my gosh. And I asked him, I said, well, how did you get to this point? And he said, well, I didn't get here on my own benefits and my own abilities. I got here on everybody else's ability. My job has been always to make other people as successful as they can possibly be, knowing that they would come back and help me be successful as I went on. And that's what I've done with our organization as well. Um, <clears throat> we, I know that that um, everybody is is always pushing to to do more business, to do more sales, to 
to grow their business, to to um, be able to enjoy life and all this kind of stuff. My focus in life has really been emphasized by helping other people make their success. And that only that applies to some of our member agents out there. It applies to our own producers, but it also applies to our own staff here. I've given a number of people the opportunity here to um, uh, show what they can do. And a lot of people have never had the opportunity to really yeah. get out there and, and do something that they really wanted to do and have somebody that would support them doing it. I have some of the most fantastic staff right now that have put together some programs that, that assist our member agencies out there that have, at a phenomenal rate. We have put together an education program out there that we just uh, launched on a national scale that has been successful in the the uh, uh, benefits for our agents out there and being able to write more business. I have a marketing department out there that that uh, allows our agents to do more than just what, whatever they could possibly do, either digitally or print-wise or anything else. It is just amazing the uh, the people that I have here that have really helped other people. And those folks, in turn, have helped me become successful as, as what I'm doing right now. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's the first thing I realized when I started meeting the team is how much everybody loved Phil. I mean, you don't really see a lot of that. You know what the story that you just shared. Okay, they never tell me either. So it's, I understand. <laughs> But you're so easy to love. And it's because your heart is so pure. You know, yeah. one of the things that I see in this industry is more and more companies are going more in the direction of uh, transferring any kind of service issues. You know, anytime a client calls in and they have any question straight to the service department and where you and I really connected on that, I don't buy into that at all. I think the beauty of an insurance book a business is the relationships that are built, you know, and so you, you, you lead by example. And so that's why so many people love working for you. You have people that have worked for you, what, 30, 40 years, <laughs> maybe well, not 40, but 20, 30 years. And it's because you're one of a kind, Phil, like I have been in this space for a long time. I've never met another Phil Fox. And so well, I'm so grateful to be a part yeah, of your group. Would you explain that to my granddaughters, please? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're teenagers, so. Yes, they're teenagers. <laughs> well, I, I will say, Phil, you've been an inspiration to me, and I've been in this business a long time and as a commercial uh, producer. And, you know, I, I've always wanted to you know, seek out individuals like you, like you are truly a mentor to, to people like myself who want to achieve that next level, who want to be successful in this business and want to learn from you. And I, it's, this has been nothing but a learning experience for me. And just kind of like, you know, having that time with you is precious because then I get a chance to really pick your brain and say, like, how do I get to this next level in my, in my life and in my business? And in the spirit of the show, it's, this is the multi-million dollar agent show. Um, and so in the spirit of that show, the next transition, I, I, you know, the kind of the question I have in my mind, Phil is, is if there was a young producer or an established agent right now listening to our live stream, what one piece of advice would you give them to start on the path of truly building a multi-million dollar agency? Like what does it, what does it really take in today's modern workplace to take that next level? And, and is it something specific or is it like something general? Like you share with us what, what the one thing in your mind that stands out the most that can help elevate somebody to, to work towards that level. Boy, that's a tough question, but I know that my success came from what I did at the very beginning of my career in the insurance business. I learned the business. I learned, you know, I learned about the policies that I was selling. I learned how to rate these policies. It was a very time consuming, very, you know, boring type thing to do, but you, but you have to do that in the beginning. One of the things that, that we've done here, and I think this would help almost any new agent or even an existing agent with, with years of experience, is that when you partner with people that know what they're doing, people that have done this before and they put together a plan that, that allows you to, to maximize your ability to, to do your job with the least, uh, the least resistance, that's a good thing. Um, I did it all on my own. I was successful doing it. It was very time consuming, but it, it um, it's what you have to do. Education, not only in learning insurance, for instance, is, is uh, significant in order to be able to be successful, 
But then again, how do you apply the, the principles of insurance? How do you explain them to people? How do you make them understand that you're not there to get their money and, and maybe settle a claim with, at some point in time? You're there to to put together a package that that uh, will make sure that they're covered when times are in need, but yet uh, economically beneficial for them. You're trying to make them successful. You're trying to allow them to, to optimize their income. So you're always trying to look out for the customer's best interest, but it takes knowledge and education and things like that. You need to partner with somebody that knows what they're doing, somebody that can really assist you and then provide you the opportunities. And, and uh, I think that is the, the key to success is, is trusting other people that you have confidence in and allowing them to help you rather than trying to do it all on your own. Yeah, 100 percent. And I know this is not this is not a plug for ICA, but I will say this. <laughs> Good the time. For thing, a plug, though. <laughs> maybe it is a plug. I don't know. Uh, but, the, but the one thing I will say is, Phil, in your philosophy that you just shared just now, You've literally, in with ICA, with your organization, you have put literally all those pieces together in, in a way where if you, when you bring on a new agent into your, you know, into your, um, into your world, you give them the tools and the resources that they need to literally hit the ground running and be successful, whether it be marketing or lead generation program or um, teaching them how to, you know, like teaching them how to do a video, like a one-to-one -one marketing video or whatever it may be, or, or how to write a complex risk. You know, like you have amazing, your education department is phenomenal. You, you guys have a curriculum that is unmatched to any organization I've ever seen where you're offering really advanced courses on, for example, how to write a complex construction risk. You know, it's like those little things really make a difference for agents. Like my, if I had those resources, when I first started off, and I, I had a team around me like an ICA, there's no telling where I would be right now. And, and, and my, I would just be able to elevate and shorten that, that timeline of success so much more. And that's, and and that's, and that's the key is that short, shorten the time frame yep. to get successful. Yep. It is not easy to go into business for yourself. It does yep. take money. It does take time and it does take risk. You have to be a little bit of a risk taker, if not a lot. And you have to have the, the the tools to be able to do it. But if you have to get those tools on your own, it is going to take time and it's going to take your time away from being successful. So our job here, what we've done, is to try to put all of the stuff together in one package, make it available at, at whatever rate that anybody wants to absorb it, and then use those tools to, to uh, increase their business going forward. Yeah. And, and it's not just being alone. It's not just about being an independent. You know, my background, I come from the captive world where there was a lot of people, but nobody provided the support that ICA offers. That's the biggest missing piece in the insurance space. I talk to independents. I talk to captives. They just don't have the support that we are bringing and that support, that education, that knowledge. That's everything, especially in this new workplace. It's all about efficiency. And so if you're not providing those tools for your agents the way that we are, they're leaving hundreds of thousands on the table. So, Phil, we got we got one last question for you. And on, for this one, I actually want you to close your eyes for a moment. So close your eyes. And I just want you to imagine that you're at the end of your career and you're standing on top of the mountain and you're looking back, reflecting on your life, your career, your family, your relationships. What is Phil's legacy? What do you want people to remember you for? Well, that's that's the question they always ask movie stars and politicians. <laughs> um, and Phil, and Phil Fox, and now me. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I'd like my family to have a an idea that I was out there looking out for their best interests and and their success and and uh, their enjoyment and fulfillment in their lives. But looking back from a from a professional point of view. I really, I would really like, I really don't have a legacy. I don't really care if people don't remember me tomorrow. All I care about is that they're successful today. Mm. They're the ones that, that got that success. I didn't do anything for them. They did it on their own. I just provided a few tools. So if to be remembered for, for something that is, is just commonplace, everyday stuff, that's fine. I can just go away and, and, uh, not have to worry because it's it's not important to me. I've I've made my success. I've had my enjoyment. I know what I've done, 
And that's all it takes. Well, I know you've already opened so many doors mm -hmm. for so many people, including myself. And so I'm so grateful. And thank you so much for this. I know that oftentimes when I ask you to share your story, you're like, it's not about me, but it really is because you were the visionary behind all of this. And we are changing lives. We are disrupting the industry and we are offering what no other master agency is offering. And it is an honor to be a part of your team. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate your comments. Man, it's an honor, Phil. It is. It, it's like I'm speechless. That's it's a great way to end. And uh, you know, we're we're looking forward to just bringing so much value to this industry, and whether it be marketing or lead generation, or you know, learning more about how to write commercial policies, or going deeper with personal law, or what, or life insurance, whatever, whatever it is that we can do to provide resources for you to be more successful and add value to your agency and to your life. That is our goal. That's that's my dream. My this is like a dream job for me right now. It's like I I could have an opportunity to make such a huge impact, and that means more to me than anything. Is hearing someone's story come back and say, "Hey, what you what you shared with me made such a difference for us," and I could I never get I never get uh, you know it, it never gets old hearing that. Well, I appreciate it greatly, um, but it's it's it, we are we are working on some new things right now. Uh, we're looking at new programs, new technologies. We want to stay ahead of the game. You need to stay ahead of the game. Things are going to change tomorrow. We have to be ready for that. And I never really look in the past at the accomplishments that we've made. I only look forward to the opportunities in the future. So well said. Those are, those are the most important things. Well said, Phil. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank I appreciate you, it very much. Thank you for joining us today. Yep. And if you're catching the replay, make sure you hashtag replay so we know where you're watching from. And we will be back next Tuesday, 12 o'clock Mountain, with more value for the modern agent. Thank you so much. Take care, Bye -bye. guys. Thanks. Thank now. you. Mm -hmm.